What's up guys, my name's Kenny. Hope you're all feeling good today. Welcome to the first video on my channel of Planet Zoo. If you guys are unfamiliar with this game, it is super fun. You get to create and design your own zoo and manage it. Uh, there's a lot of different animals in the game. Uh, it's just really fantastic. I think it looks really cool. And one of the things that really drew me to this game was some of the 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 crazy designs. Like I've, I, I, I watched some videos on YouTube of people that made their zoos look completely realistic. And like for me, I'm, I'm such a beginner at the game that like, like I none of my, my my zoo does not look like a real place, you know. Um, it's like, you know, what you need to do in this game to like create an animal enclosure is is all you technically need is to build a, a like a a boundary around the exhibit, like a fence or a, a wall or something, and then you know just have a path connect to it, and you know put a few things down to feed the animals and stuff inside, and that's it, right? Like, technically, that qualifies as an animal enclosure, but what I've seen some people do with designing of things, like, they go into just the most detailed, like, the, the, some people are just really good at designing, and, and they go above and beyond to make things look cool. And uh, anyway, point being, that is not what you guys are going to see in this video. Uh, so, um, yeah, because it's been about, like, many months since I've even played this game. Um, I, uh, you know, it's going to take me some time to get used to, uh, the controls and everything here, but I was hoping that, um, I could in the future, uh, create a new zoo on this channel and, and show you guys, you know, me, the process of designing, a some animal enclosures. Um, you know, maybe I won't do a whole lot. We'll see. This is just a really great game. I love it. Um, but anyway, we'll save the creation of new stuff for a different video, but for now, I want to go back and show you guys what I've already made so far when I did play the game previously, and that's what this video is about. So, um, the name of this zoo is called Confidence Kingdom, uh, and I wanted all of my zoo names, because I wanted to make different zoos, I wanted them to all have like an emotion or like a positive feeling associated with like, like Joyful Park, Confidence Kingdom you know, maybe something happiness, something or something. I don't know. Uh, but here we are, Confidence Kingdom. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the first exhibit that I made, or the first animal enclosure, are the giant tortoises. And one of the weird, maybe you can call it stupid, you can call it silly. One of the things that I wanted to do here, or I just tried out for the first time, was I, I created this, like, ramp, this, this stuff for them to walk up on top of. It was probably a dumb idea, uh, but I figured, how am I supposed to make a tortoise exhibit interesting, right? And uh, I couldn't really think of it. I, I think what I did was the tortoises needed to have some th sort of a roof over their head, at least in like a portion of their enclosure. So I just put this big roof above them. And then I was like, what if I could have them climb on top of it somehow? So I tried making these little this, I tried messing around with how to how to get them to be able to climb up on top, and I realized that there was actually a, an issue, which is that um, not only would the animal have to be able to access it, um, and you can actually see the the pathing uh, if you go to the heat map here. All of this blue area is where your animal is able to access by walking, right? But what I learned is that you also have to have this area accessible to the zookeepers who come in and feed them and clean up after them. So I didn't realize that that was a thing. Look at how many little baby tortoises I have here. These are Galapagos giant tortoises. These ones take a long time to mature to become a fully grown adult. Um, like this one right here is 57 years old. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So, if you guys, yeah, I mean, if you guys aren't familiar with the game, like, you have to make sure that your animals are taken care of here. You can look at the the uh, overview here, their welfare. They gotta have enough food, they gotta have the right social group, whether it's too many animals with them or not enough. Uh, they gotta have a good habitat here. Like, the temperature has to be right, the terrain has to be right, the plants and stuff, they have to have a shelter uh, for some animals, I guess. 
they have to have a shelter. And they gotta have some enrichment items like toys to play with, like a ball. So yeah, uh, this is the tortoise um, enclosure. Nothing special here, but um, you know, the other thing was the, uh, was really the one thing that I wanted to try out with the tortoises was this, um, cause I was still learning how to play the game. Um, was this uh, invisible boundary. So instead of having a wall up, instead of having like a glass like window or something, I wanted to just have people be able to like, just look at them like straight across here and, uh, and not have any fencing in between them and not have to have them go up high on a hill or something and look down on them or a viewing area. I wanted them just to look straight across. So this was me learning about the, uh, the invisible boundary sort of mechanic in the game. So I had to dig out this like trench area, put water in it. And yeah, that's kind of how I learned how to do that. So hopefully I can apply what I learned here with these tortoises to new enclosures in the future. But uh, moving on, the second animal that we're gonna look at are my saltwater crocodiles. Uh, so they are over here. Look at this guy. Uh, and really what I wanted to do with the crocodiles here was I wanted to, again, learning the mechanics of the game and how to design stuff here, is I wanted to have the people, like the guests, uh, I wanted to have them be able to look at the crocodiles both on land and underwater. So I had to dig down in the terrain here and dig this out and uh, create this big glass sort of viewing window here for them. And this took a while for me to figure out how to do this. Uh, but now that I have it, I mean, I definitely could have done this better, but it was the first time trying something like this, this like underwater area. So, uh, they have a, they actually have a fish feeder box here. So that's cool. And, uh, yeah, I mean, for the crocodiles, you have to, you have to, like, meet their requirements. So, like, the, um, the water has to be, like, so deep for them. Like, it, it, there's, like, a requirement for the depth of the water. Um, all the animals have requirements like that for their habitats. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know if there's anything out here on land. It doesn't look like it. I, I must have only, like, a few crocodiles here. I don't know if I have any young ones. No, it looks like this is a young one. And that's a, a gold star one, too. Actually, yeah, this, uh, this crocodile actually has very good genetics, so... You know, you want to try to breed, breed the, uh, breed the animals to get good genetics, and then sell them. And uh, the higher quality um, animals you got, the better, um, the better it does for your zoo for guests and uh, get more guests to come into your zoo. I guess pay money. So there is that. You know, I definitely need to work on my designing ability for the, uh, you know, surrounding areas, but. Uh, and this one, I'm I'm not very happy with the way this one turned out with like the gap here in between. Um, but I mean, it works out, I suppose. I probably could have covered this up with some plants or rocks or whatnot, but I kind of wanted to just move on and create some new stuff here. So that I, also, I wasn't planning on showing this off to anybody. So this was more of just uh, me creating the zoo for myself. But now that, it, now that I'm like recording videos of the game, I might really take my time and um, try to make things look as good as I can. But all right, next enclosure are the llamas. So just like how I had like a, an idea for the tortoises and the crocodiles of, of like testing out something with the design, the llamas over here, I also, um, I think I have too many llamas because I let them breed and I, I didn't sell them and I need to probably sell some of them. But uh, with the llamas here, also, I think some of these are siblings, so I need to make sure that they don't breed with each other and, and have inbreeding, but anyway, I, I haven't really touched the game in a while, so I'm not really too concerned about that. So my idea here was to have a low point, kind of have like the llamas go up a hill. So you have this low area here where the people go up the stairs and can actually look down on the llamas from like above, right? And then the llamas can climb up the hill here go up on top of this cliff and if they come up here the llamas can actually look down onto the people and there's actually no fence 
there's uh there's no fence here for the llamas. I mean, if this was real life, the llamas could just climb down right here and get out and escape. But uh, in the game, if we actually look at the heat map here. Uh, there is actually no um, escape point, right? Um, if if there was a, an area for the llamas to oh, they're actually going up here on top of this hill, which is cool. If there actually was a, a way for the animals to escape from their enclosure, then there would be a notification and you could see uh, where they could get out. So I did take some time here to, uh, I took some time to try to set this up right to have this like cliff where they could look down on everybody and, uh, and not be a place for them to escape. But yeah, the whole idea here was just not to have a flat like area for the llamas, but to have it be more hilly, have it to be like a, a raised up elevation. And that one is pooping. Okay. Awesome. We'll, we'll give you your privacy. I apologize. Actually, what is your name? Ta ta I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it. All right. But anyway, so yeah, again, not really like a super cool design, more of a just an idea that I had that I wanted to try out. But yeah, so we got two more enclosures. We got the elephants over here on the right, which we will get to in a moment. There's actually flamingos in there as well. As well. Excuse me, guys. Um, but we'll look at we'll look at this other enclosure that I have over here first. It's actually getting dark out. Can I just fast forward through the nighttime here? So this other enclosure that I have is the taper. I think that's how you pronounce that. The taper. And uh, it's going to rain as well. So we got these guys in here. Um, I think I might have too many in here as well. I think I might need to... When an elephant's about to have some offspring. I think... Uh, probably could have done something with lighting too. It is pretty dark when it gets to be nighttime. I'm trying to fast forward through the night and the um I want you guys to be able to see this. Here we go. So um the tapers here, they got their little shelter here. Um and they got their bedding. And I gave them some some water, like a pool. There's got they got a deep end over here that they can swim in. They can just walk through this other area. Um but what I wanted for them, so they have this archway. This was the design sort of element that I was trying to accomplish for this enclosure. Um, I wanted, I wanted them to have this like rock archway here. Let me, let me uh, get the camera sitting the way I want it to. I wanted to have this rock archway here, but I also wanted them to be able to climb up on top of it. So I, I gave them access to be able to walk up here and uh like i could put like i could take this i could move it and put it up here so now they have like an incentive to go up on top there i thought i might have another toy here somewhere but maybe not but yeah i mean that that was the whole idea wonder if I have too many of them in here. It does say there's overpopulation, so I should probably uh, send one of them to... I could probably just sell them. Go to the animal menu. Uh, this guy, I could probably just do a quick trade with him. Quick trade. And sell him for some cash. And of course, if he ever wanted to buy another one we could come in here and and uh and buy one so if i wanted to get a female i could find a female find one with good genetics and and bring it in or a male here i feel like i did a good job of finding ones that have good genetics no i guess i don't really have good genetics of these ones yet but they got a they got a forage box here. I I really like the hill because like 
To create this, like, I really had to mess with the terrain. This guy. We got the zookeeper in here right now, doing a little show. They have these, um... Animal talking points. This, uh, you have to set it, you have to place it there and, uh, schedule them for, be, for like, a certain time every day and... Right now, it looks like it's a taper time, and you can... Yeah, I mean, the zoo has staff. And, uh, you got... I have four zookeepers here, a couple of vets, three educators, that's who they are, and I got a couple of mechanics. I'm... I mean, I, I could probably manage the staff better, but it doesn't really matter. My finances are doing okay. So, anyway, the final enclosure that I want to show you guys is the big one, where I have, um... Asian elephants and um, flamingos in here. So I'm going to show you guys this. So what I wanted to do here was I wanted to have there be a lot of water around the outside and then have uh, the guests have to climb up uh, the stairs to go over the water. And you can see the flamingos down there. I mean, this is kind of one of the, one of the, one of the, design elements that I wanted to do for this one was uh, was have there be like an area here where there were flamingos. And then there's an elephant right there. Is this an adult? Yeah, it's an adult male elephant. Uh, is that a young one over there? Yeah, there's a, there's a juvenile elephant over there. Uh, so, so this is sort of what I have here. Got a sprinkler set up. Um, so there's actually two viewing areas. So for the guests, they can come up here and look down on the elephants, uh, from up here to get like an above viewpoint. And then there's also, um, these people over here, they can come in through this side and, and look at the elephants from this level. Right, to be more like up close like so if the elephant ever came over here to kind of roll around in this mud pit or this mud bath area um then then the people would like have a really close-up view of them there's also um you know and of course i didn't really do a good job of designing this area this is again trying to you know see if i could make like a cave-like thing but Really my first time trying this out. I could definitely improve to make it look better. And there are like gaps here that are, you know, they don't really look good. I probably could have put plants or rocks or... I think actually I was going to do that. I was going to put rocks in all the spaces here to make it look better. I just never really got around to doing it. I spent too much time in here. Uh, we have this waterfall metal frame in here, which I thought looks nice here. I want to, I want to, I want to look at you right now. And then I really like the idea of having multiple animals in the same area. Uh, so yeah, this was, I think this was the first enclosure that I did that in. Having elephants and flamingos in here. It is tough for some of these enclosures to um, figure out what animals do work well together. Because not all of them you can do that with, I don't think. And yeah, I mean, this is a pretty big enclosure. I mean, this is a pretty big area compared to... What I could have done. Yeah, these guys have a nice little viewing area up here. I have seen the elephants swim around underneath the walkway too over there. I just love this game so much. Yeah, he's going over there, or she's going over there right now. I like this angle. And yeah, this is the cool thing about the game is you can have the camera set up like this and uh, get so many cool shots with them. I think I think that's the thing that I love most about this game actually. It's just how you can get into it and like it's just it gets it feels so real. Like I love it. Now, I don't know I'm recording this uh 
I don't know how, I don't know if you guys have seen any uh, graphical issues with the quality of the video here or the, I don't know if it's been stuttering at all, but uh, my computer is not really the best for recording games, but hopefully, um, hopefully uh, you guys haven't seen too many issues. I want to get some good shots here. I, I, I like the idea here. The idea here... Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what it was. So the idea really for this one was I wanted to make this big enclosure for like elephants and obviously flamingos here, but I wanted to make a big enclosure for the elephants and then have the viewing area be actually in the middle of it, right? Instead of like on being on the outside and like looking in on an enclosure, I wanted it to be like like a like a a, a big area here, like a circle with the viewing area like right there. And I thought it was just cool to like be immersive in here with the elephants. And then this is just a pre-made structure for their sleeping area. And look at the size of their uh, turds here. Pretty big. Anyway. Yeah, and I, I didn't really like, I mean, I, I like the idea that they have another area to like view the elephants here where they sleep. I mean, I, I, again, I could have made this look a little bit better here, but it doesn't really matter. I w like I said, I wasn't expecting to show this off to anybody. It was more of a, you know, me trying to learn how to do things with the game and learning how to make some of these animal enclosures. But, I mean, that's really it. Each of these areas, I had an idea. For the tortoises, I wanted to, you know, experiment with this invisible boundary here. With the crocodiles, it was... An underwater viewing area, underground, I should say, viewing area. For the for the llamas, I wanted the llamas to be able to look down on the people. For the tapers, I wanted them to climb up on this rock archway. And then for the elephants and stuff, I just went over this. Have a viewing area above. And have, oh man, I, I really like this elephant area. Even if it's, I just like what I did here. And of course, I had to go through and individually put down like all of these rocks and these trees and these equipments and, and even down to like where I put the grass and the dirt and like these rocks. I mean, I have so much fun designing these areas. I cannot wait to uh, get into this game some some more and, and, and design some more stuff. So, yeah, let me leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, Again, I'm not great at designing stuff, but hopefully I do get better. And, uh, oh no, one of the elephants is gonna inbreed. I don't want you to inbreed. Are they like... Maybe it's one of the offspring. Maybe I don't let you breed. Maybe I do that. Anyway. Um, yeah, so... That is... This little zoo here that I have, Confidence Kingdom. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, yeah, let me know if there's like any recommendations or anything. Maybe what you guys, um, maybe like what animals you guys want me to see. Uh, I just, I really have fun with the game of like having an animal and saying, okay, what's a, an interesting idea that I can have for an animal enclosure? And then just kind of get to work and trying to design something. So. Uh, even though I'm not the best, I still enjoy playing the game and trying to design something. It's, it's just, it's such a good game. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. Take care.